Hey guys, Roddy back again, and it is the moment that you have been waiting for. Maybe you haven't, <laughs> but if you've been following me through this series, you've been following my channel, you know that I have tried really, really hard to give you guys an honest, real world, day to day uh, phone review of across multiple platforms and some of the latest and greatest phones that are out there. And it's all boiled down to this moment to what would I classify or what would I choose? What would be the phone that I picked for best phone of the year? And well, to me, it's the phone that kind of went the distance this year. It's the phone that while we didn't get a ton of devices out there that were extremely different than their predecessors last year, I typically like to go with the phone that feels like the biggest and best upgrade over last year's model. And this phone really, I felt, did that in a lot of small ways that added up to be the total package. This phone had great battery life. It had a great um, camera system. It had lots of versatility in cameras. It had a premium build, a build that was even better than its predecessor. Um, it had just solid performance. I felt like updates made this phone better and better and better. Um, one of the best screens out there, good haptics, some of the best haptics, some of the best customization of phone that I really felt like I could make my own and that anyone else out there could. Um, just the, the list of accolades go on and on and on. While this is not a perfect phone because there's no such thing as a perfect phone, this phone to me felt like it brought so much in so many ways and even though it was mostly incremental upgrades they were just enough to me to really push it over the edge to be the best phone of the year and that goes to the samsung s23 ultra and i know there's a lot of people going really uh, of all things yes this phone came out early in the year January was announced. You could pick this up in February and you got so much here. This 8 Gen 2 chip from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon chipset, the world got it. It was only one chipset and it was overclocked for Galaxy phones, meaning Samsung worked closely with Qualcomm and Snapdragon to make one of the best chips I've ever seen. Thermals were great. Haptics were great here everything just seems like it got smoother and smoother with refinements in one ui you got great battery life here and on top of that this design didn't really change much from the s22 ultra but you got just a little bit flatter edges on the sides you you got less of a curved screen but you still got a, enough that was it kind of gave it that endless display with no bezels hardly visible um, and and then even the back of this this frosted backing just seemed a little bit more premium all the way around and it just took it kind of just incrementally to a different level that was just very very impressive um, while I've had my gripes and complaints about the cameras they've still been extremely solid even the times where I felt like the software was doing crazy things it still gave me such a good image that if i didn't like it i could go in and edit it it was still usable it was still a, a, a really good solid photo and and i don't think that these phones were ever taking bad pictures i think that it was giving you a good quality image that was usable that was able to be edited that was pushing a pro level phone and while it might not have been one of the best point and shoot cameras out there it was still shooting way further ahead than a lot of the competition equal to the competition or giving you that versatility that if you didn't like what you had you could edit it you could get more zoom out of this you could get macro shots you could get so much from this device and it just did it in such a really good way versus its predecessor, which I had a lot of complaints about, that I was just really, really impressed with this phone. It was snappy, it was fast. It was just one of the best devices that you could get when it came out. And it went all the way through the year with everyone else bringing the heat, bringing their best. After they saw this phone, to me, 
It was a definite winner, a phone that could go all year long, competing with the competition, putting their best foot forward, and just staying in the game the entire year. That is my pick for this year, 2023. Best phone of the year goes to the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. While there were a lot of great contenders like the Pixel 8 Pro, uh, Pixel Fold, you had great foldables from Samsung. You had one of the best iPhones I think to ever come out with some, some really stunning things that it did. Um, you had great phones from Motorola this year. You had an awesome phone from the Nothing 2. I just think that Samsung just really came out swinging and it really came down to how well this phone was with its processing power and how Samsung paid attention to detail on the outside, on the inside, and they continuously upped the ante and gave you more and more and more. And this phone went all year long being a super great and solid device. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me this year. We're looking forward to what's coming up in 2024. We got some big changes coming. I'll announce that soon. You guys have a good one and we will see you next time.